This is B&H, and in this video, we'll demonstrate how to photograph clouds of paint in the comfort of your own home. Shooting paint clouds is a simple project that can yield colorful and fun results. This is a versatile project that can be shot with a phone, still camera, or video camera. All you need to get started is a pack of paint and a clear tank to fill with water. Before shooting, you'll need to do some prep work. I'm using acrylic paint to make the paint clouds, which needs to be diluted with water to get the right consistency. The paint on its own is very thick and viscous, so it won't create the cloud effect we're looking for. I have a few small cups that will have one part paint and about four parts water. Stir these around until the paint is mixed well. Since this paint set comes with primary colors, I can mix these to make new colors. I'll use blunt needle syringes and pipettes to drop the paint into the water to create the cloud effect, but you can also use a cup or other container to drop the paint into the water. For the water tank, you can use just about anything that's clear and can hold water, such as a cup, a vase, or any other household object. A fish tank works really well for larger paint clouds, but it can be cumbersome since you'll need to dump the water and clean the tank between takes. When setting up the water tank, be sure to clean it both inside and out to remove any dust or water stains. Use warmer water to make sure there's a smaller chance of water bubbles accumulating on the walls of the tank. If you have an issue with water bubbles building up on the walls, you can use a squeegee or a cloth to wipe them away. To shoot the paint clouds, you can use any camera and light combination that you prefer. I have the water tank set up on a sturdy table. I'll use three strobe lights, two with softboxes pointed at the tank, and one pointed at the wall to give a blown out white background. I have my DSLR on a tripod with my 100mm macro lens. I'm using this clamp that's attached to this light stand to hold the syringes in place. This helps to frame on the area where the paint splashes into the water and makes it easy to inject the paint and shoot simultaneously. With the water tank prepped, I'll fill the syringe with paint and get the syringe into place. The syringe does not need to be inserted into the water and it can hover just above it. To frame the shot, I'm holding a spatula below the syringe since it's roughly the same size as the paint cloud that will be generated from the syringe. This helps me make sure that the area is centered and in focus. Now that everything is set up, simply keep one hand on the camera trigger and the other on the syringe. Push down on the syringe plunger and start shooting. You want to time it just right so you capture the cloud as it enters the water. Develop a rhythm of pressing the syringe plunger and then pressing the trigger so you capture the paint cloud in time. Here's a shot I captured of the green paint in the fish tank. The syringe works great for this, since it creates some velocity as it pushes the paint into the water, creating this pointed plume. The paint is the right consistency so there's texture in the cloud with different folds and shapes. This process is a lot of trial and error. Keep injecting paint and shooting to capture different shapes. With a large fish tank, you have plenty of space for the paint to dissipate so you can keep shooting clouds and capturing different shapes. Eventually, the water will get too cloudy with paint, so you won't be able to get a clear shot, so you'll need to dump the water and reset the tank. I found that this 10 gallon tank was too cumbersome and time consuming to keep filling and cleaning between takes, so I switched to a small square vase. This small vase works perfectly since it has enough space to frame on a single cloud while also being easy enough to reset quickly. To do multiple colors, I filled several pipettes with different colored paint. I found the pipettes easiest to use for this since I can hold them together in one hand and apply pressure to the pipette to squeeze out the paint. Having the colors clash against each other gives some great swirls and adds even more texture to the paint cloud. Now it's time to take the paint cloud photos a little bit further. I want to composite the paint cloud images with some items to create a visually stimulating image. I have a pack of colored pencils, so combining the paint cloud with the color pencil can look pretty cool. First, I want to get some solo shots of the paint clouds. I want to get three different clouds in blue, red, and green colors to match the colored pencils. I'll use the smaller square vase to get these shots. Fill the syringe with blue paint and shoot the paint injection. I'm looking for a very specific cone shape so the clouds look like they're shooting out from the colored pencils. This shape is easy to make with a syringe or pipettes. I'll repeat the shooting process with the red and green paints. With the small vase, I'm able to reset quickly, so it only took about 20 minutes to get all three of the paint cloud shots I wanted. Next, I'll get some shots of the colored pencils that will be composited with the paint clouds. To achieve this, I simply used a hot glue gun to glue some small dowel rods to the pencils and use the clamp I had set up for the syringes to hold them in place. I'll shoot them on the same white background and use one of the soft boxes to give a long, even highlight along the side of the colored pencil. 
I have a white bounce card standing on the table next to the pencil to give some fill light bouncing from the softbox. The colored pencils have a gold reflective logo on them, so I'll hold another bounce card above the camera. This will add some fill to the front of the colored pencil, and it'll reflect on the gold logo. I'll repeat this process with the other two colored pencils. Shooting the pencils was a breeze, and it only took a few minutes. After some cleanup in my shooting space, it's time to import the images and start editing. I have a folder with the images I selected from the shoot, and I'll batch edit these in camera raw, doing some basic color temperature, exposure, and contrast adjustments. In Photoshop, I created a basic white canvas that I'll copy and paste the different assets I want to edit together. I'll start with the colored pencils. I want to cut these out and add them to the white canvas, so I'll use the pen tool. Press P to open the pen tool and click along the outer edge of the pencil, creating path points that will be used to cut out the pencil. There's many methods you could use to cut out the colored pencil, like the magic wand tool, the magnetic lasso tool, and others, but I find the pen tool to be the easiest and the fastest. I just follow the edge of the colored pencil all the way around and make any adjustments on the path points that are on the curved areas of the colored pencil. With the path complete, I'll right-click on the canvas and select Make Selection. As the name describes, this will make the path into a selection which you can copy and paste into the canvas. I'll repeat this process on the other two colored pencils, using the pen tool to follow the edge of the pencil, making the path into a selection, and copy them into the canvas. With all three colored pencils copied into the canvas, I'll label each layer accordingly. I like to label layers and keep them organized. It makes things a lot easier down the line when the file gets more complex with a lot of layers. Now it's time to copy in the paint clouds. Since the edges of the paint clouds are more complex, I'll use the lasso tool to make a selection around the entire cloud and then copy and paste it into the canvas. Add a layer mask to the paint cloud layer, which we'll use to remove the unwanted background from the paint cloud. I'll use the magic wand tool to select the white background. With the layer mask selected, fill the selection with black to remove the background. The magic wand tool is easy to use, but sometimes it can leave some artifacts behind that will have to be removed. I'll make a new layer and fill it with black and place it under the paint cloud layer so I can see any missed parts of the background. With the layer mask selected, use a black brush to remove any unwanted artifacts left behind by the magic wand tool. With all the assets in the canvas, I'll start sizing them and arranging them into place. Press Ctrl R or Command R on Mac to open the ruler guides. You can click and drag from the ruler to create guidelines. I'll use two of these to make all three colored pencils the same size. Use the free transform tool by selecting the layer and pressing Ctrl T or Command T. Rotate the colored pencil upright and scale it so each end is touching a guideline. I'll continue using the free transform tool to align the paint clouds with the matching colored pencils, aligning the pointed end of the paint cloud to the tip of the colored pencil. I'll select the colored pencil and paint cloud together so they can be arranged together and start moving the layers around to find a layout that I like for the composite. For this image, I want the colored pencils to be on top of one another with the paint cloud shooting out the tip of the pencil. Everything's now in place, so I'll start doing some refinements on the layers. I want to blend the paint cloud into the colored pencil, so I'll use the brush tool on the layer masks of the paint cloud layers to remove the cloud parts that overlap on the pencil. I'll also make a layer mask on the colored pencil layer and use the brush to remove the colored pencil tip, leaving behind the textured wooden part of the pencil. Move the layers around slightly and use the brush tool to make adjustments to the layer masks on both layers to blend them together so it looks like the paint cloud is shooting out of the colored pencil. This is a very simple composite and easy to put together. The paint cloud is shooting out of the colored pencil, so I'll move on to cleaning up the image. I'll make a new layer and use the clone stamp tool to clean up the colored pencils. There's some markings on the colored pencils that I want to remove, so I'll make a selection from a clean area by pressing the Alt or Option key and then paint over the marking. The clone stamp tool is perfect for areas like this where you want to repeat patterns or texture. The colored pencils have a natural texture to them, so we don't want to overdo the touch-ups. Only focus on the most glaring parts like dust and scratches or tiny hairs and dents. The logo is reflective and has some black areas that were not filled in by the bounce card when shooting. For this portion, I'll use the brush tool and select the gold color in the logo and brush over the black area. I use a low opacity brush and do several passes while painting over the area. For a reflective surface like this, you don't want it to look too flat. 
With the low opacity brush, I'll leave some of the dark detail to give the impression of a gradient so it's not filled with solid gold color. On the red paint cloud, there's a lot of air bubbles on the cloud. When I was injecting the paint into the water, I did it with a bit of force, which caused some air to shoot out with the paint. I'll use the clone stamp tool to remove these and clean up the paint cloud. Everything is cleaned up, but the color of the paint clouds do not match the colored pencils. An easy fix for this is to use a layer with the hue blending mode. First, I'll make a new layer and place it above the paint cloud layer. Right click on the layer and select Create Clipping Mask. This will allow the layer to only affect the layer directly below it and not the rest of the layers. I'll use the brush tool and make a color selection on the colored pencil by holding the Alt or Option key. Select an area of the colored pencil that has the right tone that you want to apply to the paint cloud. Next, use the brush tool to paint over the paint cloud with the selected color. You'll notice that the clipping mask only has the paint on the paint cloud layer and not on the background. Go to the pop-up menu at the top of the layers window and look for the hue blending mode. Selecting the hue blending mode will change the hue of the paint cloud layer so it matches the hue of the color selection we made. This is a quick and easy way of color matching two objects that are similar colors, but the hue may be slightly off. Repeat this process for the other two paint clouds so they match the colored pencils. You can use the opacity slider to adjust the opacity of the hue layers and tweak the hue. Sometimes you may need to lower the opacity to get the color just right. Now that the color corrections are done, the last step will be exposure and contrast adjustments. I'll make a curves layer and use a clipping mask to make an adjustment to each individual layer, adding a bit of contrast with an S-curve and bumping up the highlights a bit. The composite is all set, and I feel we achieved a pretty cool looking image, utilizing the paint clouds in a creative way. You can use these paint cloud images to composite into a variety of different images, or you can use them on their own. The final result of shooting a paint cloud always looks great, and it's a lot of fun. This is B&H, and if you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe.